Napoli, a team last season that dominated Syria, lifting the Sudetto since the great Maradona have unfortunately collapsed since then. And my day is ruined. With their successful manager Spalletti leaving the club, they have now fallen down the Serie A table and now face their worst form in 15 years. This is the worst! And that is why today, ladies and gentlemen, we are here to rebuild the mighty Napoli back to Serie A champions and make history and finally win them the Champions League for the first time ever in their club history. Let's go meet the team. Now, look at some of the individuals in this team. It's pretty bold standard that these two players here are incredible in real life and still pin up some of the numbers for Napoli in Kuliskela and Victor Oshimen. Very linked in with Chelsea. A lot of people feel like that could happen in the near future, but for now, he is still the Nigerian king at Napoli. Good player in real life for them that's doing really well as well is Du Lorenzo and actually Politino here who is 29 at the overall of 80. However though, I don't think we've got a bad budget with Napoli this season. I think they're all quite rich clubs. So, I mean, we could really look to invest to really change up something right there. They've got Raspadori who is a decent little player as well. Simeone, Lindstrom, Natam. This guy here really just catches my eye at the age of 22. Brilliant Zillion at the overall of 75. I think he can grow up to be quite a decent player. This is what I was on about with the budget though. I mean 16 million, but with some couple of sales, I feel like we could definitely make some improvements within the team. Looking at the objective though from the board this year, youth development is very low. So we're not going to dodge into them this rebuild here today, ladies and gentlemen, because like I said, it is very low from the ball, which is to be fair, it's not too bad indeed. They want to just kind of just throw it to gun to the meadow and just go for it. As you can see, domestic is a critical, but we'll get to that in a minute. Brian Spurs just signed one player of different nationality from the one of the clubs. We could definitely do that within two seasons. Increase the team's experience lower by getting the average age of 29. Again, definitely could do that as well. Financially, uh, okay, I mean, it's a meaning priority, but this is where it gets a little bit tasty, ladies and gentlemen. Obviously, they are seventh at the moment in the league, but they want us to go back for where they were 16 points clear last season and win the title and win the Coppola Italia Florosca as well. Fashion we Pelanza probably butchered it. The game is the game. You're probably wondering though, why are we in the conference league? They're in the Champions League in real life. However, because now they are seventh in the league, I'm acting like this kind of near the end of their season. So we're just going to continue there and put it as a seventh place and look like they're going to be in at the Europa Conference League, which to be fair, we should definitely win it with being a high priority right there. Like I said, the team is looking very good, but it needs a lot of work. And like I said, we need to get that budget up if we really want to contest with the mighty teams like Milan, Inter Milan, Juventus for the season. So a couple of days have gone by ladies and gentlemen as you can see we have got three inboxes as you can see a lot of players have been sold which we go through there we've actually got an offer for a De Lorenzo which we will quickly swiftly reject that right there and block it he's one of our best players and we definitely do not want really to get rid of that but anyway back onto the subject at hand here transfer history here we go so Oscar here goes to SC Abraga for 7 million just got so much variety in that centre back row and I don't see a future with this guy at Napoli same with Juan Jesus here, 32 to replay, 2.6 million. We've got to have a couple of centre backs coming in. I uh, definitely feel like we need a new centre back anyway. That's going to show a bit more longevity for the club and it'll be a lot longer. This one it could be a bit of a shock to him as Zielinski here gone to Manchester City. A decent player for Napoli in real life. However, I think it's time for him to move on. Like I said, we need the money. So we need a big hitter to kind of leave the club so we can invest in someone a little bit younger. And also Deem here go to Sosulu. Again, just can't really see a future within the team i did say though i wasn't gonna actually look at the youth academy but by the defaulted youth academy actually found someone quite good in usable adrasco here from argentina which we will bring in and we will have a quick look now live and have a look at his statistics so here we go let's have a look at this youth lad right here show me the money and well we've got very very lucky indeed i feel like to be fair we are gonna probably loan him out for this season because i can really see him working the team straight away but he looks like a quality player indeed definitely a left back here or a right back i mean we try to go center back here but it's four weeks so we're just gonna leave him on here but i feel like a low spell for this guy is gonna be very good indeed because as you can see in the left back where we've got my ori and olivia at the back line right now so he's not really gonna get a bit of room for this season so i feel like a loan spell for this individual is probably the best bet for season one however the, let's have a look at our budget and now it's a whopping 96 million to splash on this team right here and the first starting in for nappy ladies and gentlemen falls to a man in Raphael varan a bit of a shock for probably everyone right there but i feel like at man you know it is okay but it's on way too much money and to be honest it's a bit of a switch up for him here and it was a decent deal of only paying 23 million 
for a guy that's won the World Cup and numerous Champions League medals with Real Madrid. We definitely need someone after Kim Min Jae went to Bayern Munich. We see someone with a bit more experience and that is why he will be our new number four at Napoli. He's 30 years old. Yes, I said someone young, but I can't deny the opportunity we got for getting Rafael around this team. Decent centre-back, the Frenchman is in. And so ladies and gentlemen, we're into our next signing in Fatinha from PSG. The Portuguese sensation has sent him made, has got a bit of talent in his locker and we have swapped him out with Jesper Lindstrom with 14 million. If there's one thing I've known about Napoli, I feel like they lack a little bit of creativity in that midfield going a bit forward. I feel like that's quite a bad them and I feel like this guy in the centre mid role as our new number seven with the potential he has got could do that as well. PSG got a stacked midfield and this guy needs a new challenge. And that ladies and gentlemen will round up the signings for season one. Only two but this is the final team. I normally do a formation change but to be honest I've got to neutralise that trio top with Politino, Oshiman and Kuliskela. They have been absolutely dominant and probably keeping this team from really plummeting down the Serie A table. As you can see for 10 years going in Leblanca and Zambo in the midfield. We've got the new experienced Frenchman for Ram with Mario Rory and the Romani. Di Lorenzo and Merit right here. As you can see with some of the players on the substitutions though, I will be converting some of these to right wingers and maybe Raspadori maybe into a camera so eventually Vitinha could go into this position here and actually do a bit of damage right there. But for now, I'm going to just try him out in the centre mid row because he is a, he's just an all-round baller to be honest. So kind of like a young Bernardo Silva in a way if you want to just convert him to that right there. However, though, the team is looking not too bad indeed. Like I said, I'll convert some into left wings, right wings, right backs. Who knows? We'll get to it right there. I just want to clarify as well that this young lad has gone to Inter Dominante here for a one-year loan. And Rogue's gone to Union Berlin for a, uh, for a loan. Not too shabby right there. Victor Rogue, a big prospect in the near future. We've also took the liberty, ladies and gentlemen, of doing a team strategy, which will be the wing play. Like I said, the team is just looking dominant up top. Politino and Kuliskela just picking up the stats with Oshman this season. And we need to neutralize the wings as much, but especially in Kuliskela. We've also as well hired out some coaches, especially in neutralizing the defensive area, because like I did say, and we can all see, it's quite old. So we definitely need to kind of just help them a little bit more throughout the season. But other than that, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're absolutely fine. If I had to kind of ask for something from the team this season to keep my job intact and well for the future, I would say probably top four in the league. And I would say with the kind of, I'm not sure what cup it's called, bloody now. Here we go, the Coppa Italia, sorry. I reckon we can go on to win this. And also, I think with the Conference League, we've got to go on to win that as well. So the double should be secured for the first season. And who knows, maybe in the second season, go for the league right there if we sign a couple more players. Our budget at the moment is 23 million. Nice budget to just sit on with contracts as well. And we've got a Raj who got loaned out the young talent right there. I just want to quickly mention as well with some of the players on the bench and substitutions, I will be converting some of them, for example, Mazeroski here to a right wheel so it's got a bit of rotation within the team. Other than that, though, I think we are pretty much ready to go, ladies and gentlemen, for season one. What I'll do, I'll simulate to the end of the season and we'll see how Napoli's got on with season one so here we have the end of the season one against Fenerbahce in probably the semi-finals beat the Udinese there and we wow what a semi-final second end but we beat Colombia I couldn't get in there 4-3 I believe it was there for us against Fenerbahce we beat Florentina away for our last game going against Lise not bad not too bad at all where are we coming in the lead before we submit our last game we are back baby 83 points and we have come first and to be fair, it is very, very tight indeed. Juventus and Inter are there. We have only got it by goal difference, but to be fair, by Politino, Oshiman and Kuliske are probably doing the job there, getting a 10 plus on goal difference. However, Super Cup, have we done that there in the first season? And we have. We've won that one as well, potentially. Coppa Italia right there. Knocked out this one here. As you can see, semi-finals. 4-2 to Milan. 6-6 on Araga. Then 4-4 to Roman Juventus. It's an incredible one there. But Juventus come out on top in that leg right there. And as you can see, the conference thing, we've done that as well as well. We did expect us to do this one probably the best one out of all the competitions, really, with Aston Villa being in the final. However, though, let's get past that last game. Can we do it here? This needs to be a win, and it's in our favour being the home side against a very poor Leeds. But are they going to shock the world here? Let's get into the quick sim here. Can we do it? And it's 2 all. Oh, my God. So I can't believe it. But Monza have beaten Juventus. Hang on just a second. I mean, this this could be a massive upset here in the Serie A table. I mean, 
Let's have a look at who's gone on to win it. And we've still won it. Sensational. I can't believe it. I mean, we've absolutely bowled it against Lee's, but Inter and Juventus have had a shocker as well. I mean, the hey, what's going on here? I'm a bit confused. Let's have a look here. Let's just scroll all the way down. I don't know why they do this. It makes it so difficult to understand it. But let's have a look. So we drew to Lee's. How did... Obviously, Juventus lost to Monza. But how did Inter get on? They must have maybe drawn their game as well. They did. They, they drew against Verona. So somehow, we have won the league. Regardless, I cannot believe it right there. But fair play to Napoli. And well, to be honest, I mean, fair play to the teams like Verona getting the draw. And the same with Monza beating Juventus. I mean, how has that happened right there? But we will take it indeed. However, though, it is time now for the Aston Villa. We've got a lot of stuff copping up here, but hopefully we can get the job done here today. Let's get into it. Let's have a little match of right in here. Let's have a little gook right into the kickoff. No messing around here. Quick sim. Can we beat Aston Villa? And we don't. They absolutely batter us right there. Three. Well, we could have scaled it. Only getting the goal in the 66th minute. But we fell short in the Conference League. However, though, we have won the league in our first season. Then we will definitely take that. With as well the Super Cup, the EA Sports Super Cup right there, which we will take. Happy days indeed. So we have ticked off two trophies already, including the league, which is, to be honest, a very good season indeed. I mean, to be honest, I don't know why we've dropped down even more in the orange. I mean, my first manager row in season one for Napoli. We have done very well indeed. Going to the squad pile now, though, who are our top performers? I've got a funny feeling I'll know two. That uh, definitely are. Oh, am I right? It definitely is. Could it scale on Oshi, man? Doing the bits, Polotino with 19 goals and 7, which is a shame because next season I feel like he could get dropped to the corner rotation and row because we need someone there to just keep on retaining the league and going for the Cups and especially the Champions League. So in the season though, Vitinha gone up by loads, 10 goals and 21 assists. Have you ever seen a more of an impactful debut season than a player like this? The young Bernardo Silva that I said. What a player indeed. Unbelievable. Lebraska as well with some decent stats. But overall, a very, very good season indeed. There's actually a player that will be coming back from loan as well. That left wing back will we get to see right now. Semi rule. And I want to make this guy the main man in that left back row. So I feel like everyone in left back next season will potentially get sold. So we can make way. And this guy can get 100 games for Napoli for season two. Other than that though, decent season. Two seasons. And I feel like we could potentially do this. You never know the team is there. But season one, two trophies. Very good job for Napoli in season one. And so season two has arrived. Coming up from last season, obviously winning the league in our first season as manager as Napoli. We also won the Super Cup as well, but unfortunately got knocked out by Milan in the semi finals in the Coppa Italia. And also lost the Conference League to Aston Villa. Uno Emery's magic team right there. The team... It's looking very good, but as you can see in the goalkeeping program, Mera did leave the team. I'm not too sure who he we went to. He just missed out there. We can actually have a quick, let's a quick look, actually, to be fair, can't we? Where did he actually go to? Because I actually did want to keep him in the team, but we couldn't offer him a contract. I did try. Well, similar in, but he has gone to Seville in the Spanish division. So fair enough, indeed. So we definitely need a brand new goalkeeper. And we definitely could do it with 133 million right now. We could definitely get that going right there. We've got the objectives right here. Youth Academy and Oscar Dodgex is very low priority. Frank Spojo, we pretty much have done that. We got within two seasons. I mean, we're on the, well, averaging 25.8 at the moment. We need to be 29, which is a bit weird, but we can have a look into that potentially if it's a high priority. Financially, absolutely fine right there. That's absolutely fine. Make a profit of 42.5 million. Domestic success, though. Would they want us to do the back to back Serie A champions right there, which you would expect to be fair, considering we've just won it last season. And now they actually do want us to finally conquer the Coppola Italia. They said that objective last season, but we failed down the semis. So this one here is one of the only remaining ones to take off with this one right at the Champions League. They've actually wanted to reach the final. And the team is looking very good indeed. And especially with that budget right there, we could definitely make it indeed with 133 million. However, a couple of days have gone by and a couple of players have left the team. And we've actually sold a lot because also we had a lot of loans coming back. And I don't want to be the team too clustered, let's just say that. So I've got rid of some players there. Starting off with this guy right, I'm not going to try and pronounce his last name because we know we're all going to know. I'm going to budget it, but we sold into Real but account for 9 million. Not going to really get into the team at all, to be quite not sure. Shadira gone to Senestera, where is the bloody name called? I believe that's in the lower tier. It might be, I don't know, I'm not too sure. They might be in this Serie A, but they must be not the most best team in the world. But he has gone there for 3.0 now. Mario Rui here, that would be a bit of a shock here, but 33 years old. Also, we got that Youth Academy now, and that Olivia, who is a left back as well. 
bit more potential, pretty much the same overall, and I want to make way for the Eve Academy player in the near future as more of a rotational left back with the other left back we got in the club. So he goes to Marseille. Simeone, he wanted to leave the club from last season. Obviously, Raspadori was more of the starting striker over him on the rotation with Oshiman. So he wanted the least. We let him leave for Frankfurt for 3.7. And Nguni here has gone for Wolves on loan on a one-year contract, which puts our budget up to 172 million to improve this team and maybe contest for the Champions League. I feel like we could do it. Got a really good team. We have got a very, very good team in DF. A couple of more sign-ins. And we could be definitely up there to go for the Champions League. And you never know. Win the win. Well, Jesus, win the win. What am I saying? That win the actual league again. And also go on to win the Coppa Italia that we did miss out by Milan from last season. And the first man, ladies and gentlemen, goes to a man who was Man United's star, but but now they got Garnacho in Marcus Rashford. That's right. We brought an English man to the Serie A. We've seen it with Tomori. We've seen it with Jaden Sancho going into Bundesliga with Borussia Dortmund. We've seen it with Jude go to Real Madrid. So why not give Marcus Rashford a bit of a fresh start? Not really the main man. Well, he is a bit of a main man at Man United, but he just isn't the player he used to be. I think he needs a fresh start. So why not Napoli? 50 million, a new left winger has joined Napoli. Our next individual falls to one of the best keepers in world football, and that is Edison. I was debating him or Alisson, to be quite honest with you. But I feel like with Man City just recently winning the Champions League, we need to actually go for it this season because it is one of our high priorities. So why not go for Edison? Bit of a change up right there. Brazilian going into the, the, the Italian division. Obviously, one of all he can in Manchester City. So, you never know. With Pep maybe stepping aside in the next couple of years, he needs a new team to go to. And with us just winning the league, I wouldn't see it happening in real life. You never know. You never know. So, Edison, 89 overall. We paid a whopping 80 million for him as our no goalkeeper for Napoli. And our last sign in for season two. We're pretty much bankrupt now, but I had to get him. In Mickey van der Ven from Tottenham. Obviously, with around the team, we need someone that has got some absolute rapid pace. And to be honest, I'm going to say it. Mickey van der Ven is an incredible, incredible player in real life and got a bit of potential. I really do like this kid. And we have to swap him with Natan to make this work out. 20 million Natan, centre back going with 24 million on top to make our last signing in Mickey van der Ven for Napoli in season two. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Here is the team for season two with three new additional signings in Marcus Rashford going in the left wing. Now, we converted Kevin Skeller to a right wing. It only took two weeks, so it was absolutely fine right there. Hence why we brought in Marcus Rashford. I think he could do really well in this team. With his former teammate, Raphael Vian back in the team as well. Mickey van der Ven and also Ellison at the back. The team is looking massively strong. And as you can see, Arraja has got a 70 rule now. So he will be rotation with Illyria when he does make his appearances in the game. You never know. Other than that, though, the team is looking incredible. I'm really liking this team. I think it could actually dominate the Serie A once again. And who knows, get to a final. We also went our way as well to make some more coaches into the team. As you can see, we've hired a lot more, which is absolutely fine. Not really much in the attacking role, because like I said, the attack now this season is unbelievable. I feel quite bad on Politino, but we need a bit more of an upgrade for the Champions League. So that's why. Marcus Rashford goes into the team. And that though, the team is ready to go in season two, ladies and gentlemen. The only thing left to do now is simulate to the end of the season and see how Napoli get on. So here we are, the end of the season, two all against Manchester City. Can we beat him away? 8 7. Jesus Christ, I think we're in a final. And to though, and we did, we beat Inter as well. And it looks like our last game of the season will be against Roma. However, the 14th of May, 8-7 on penalties against Manchester City. I don't know if that inter game was the semis or the final. How we got on the Lego and it's pure domination once again. This Napoli team is an absolute joke. How are we going to get on in the other cup? So Super Cup, have we done that one as well? We have, so that's two trophies there. Have we finally ticked off the Coppa Italia? Was it into the semi-final? Was that the final? And it was the final. So that's the treble. So we could actually be on... For the quadruple, this could be the greatest team we've ever had on a career mode. And I'm going to say it, and it's against Borussia Dortmund, it seems. I mean, look at that for semi-final legs with both games. I mean, 2 on aggregate there for Borussia Dortmund and Paris Saint-Germain. 5-4 to Borussia Dortmund. 3 all, and then 1 all to an 8-7 on pennies against Manchester City. How did we go on in the quarterfinals there? So let's have a little gander. Beat Liverpool 5-2 on aggregate. All right, 1 all in the second leg. How do we get on in the round of 16? How do we get there? Beat Barcelona 3-2. And the group stage, we went undefeated. This team is an absolute joke. I will say right there. Unbelievable. Unbelievable indeed. Absolutely battered the league as well with only potentially two losses. 
with Roma just left to do as well. It is truly unbelievable. But let's get into this last Roma game now. We have won the league by country mile. I can't believe it. I mean, this team, obviously ridiculous. I'm signing with Mickey van der Ven, Edison, Rashford. They've all gone up as well because soon even Edison was literally an 89. He's gone up even higher as well to one more plus as well. Quicks in this one. And we won this one as well with Oshman and Kuzka, the main threats in this team. Pure domination. Absolute domination indeed. Let's have a look at our total points at the end. It should load up with the Champions League screen now. It does indeed. And the Votens Arena. A stadium we have not been to in the Champions League title. So very interesting indeed. But how many points did we finish on right there? 98 for Napoli. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. But let's simulate up here to it. Oh, we've got the uh, player of the season. I presume this is either Kubiskelo or Oshiman. You never know though. Let's have a little... Uh, Gander and it goes to Kula Scaler. Fair play indeed. We're just going to quickly send that right there. A fair play to him, indeed. I mean, I'm intrigued to see what their stats are. Well, all the whole team, to be honest, considering them so well. Some players want to leave wage to manage. We all know that always bloody happens with the nine plus inboxes. Here we go again. Still getting it. We just want to get to the game. I want to see Dortmund's long because I do believe in the last rebuild in our Syria. I'm not too sure. Correct me if I'm wrong. We had British Dortmund as well. Oh my god, just let me get to the bloody game. We had British Dortmund into the final with Mioko did score. I believe it was the Milan rebuild, but now with the Napoli one. I said Milan was one of the best ones, but this Napoli team has took it by storm. And it is kicked ass, I'm just going to say. But look at the team now. It's good. I mean, Jane Sancho has a turn back, but it's just... I don't know. I mean, I don't want to hate it too much because there must be a reason why they've got to the Champions League final. But this team here is on another level. Vitinha as well. Our Bernardo Silva the team pretty much as well. Probably got ridiculous to stop. Stats this season. Zambo with the blocks in the middle. We're kind of scared of Oshiman and Rashford. Olivier, Varane, Van der Ven, Di Lorenzo, Captain and Edison, the team. It's pure domination. Let's see if we can take it off and get the quadruple this season. Dominant side, Napoli against British Dortmund's German dominant side. Can we do it here? It's blue versus yellow. Let's see if we can do it here. That's the question. I mean, to be fair, if we win this today... Surely this Napoli team could go down as one of the greatest Serie A teams ever. You gotta say it. You have to say it. I mean, the stats, I mean, we've won the league back to back as well. Gotta remember that. The Super Cup as well. It's unbelievable. But this guy here, I feel like he's been a tremendous sign in Mickey Van der Ven. I'll say that. I've just lost the ball then. But the pace he delivers in that defensive role is frightening. And I think in the near future, you're gonna see a lot more of that with Spurs. Playing as more of a full back and centre back. Good switch there though. But anyway, constant game of hand. Lorenzo plays it inside Salablanca. Into Oshiman. There's an overlap and run there. We cannot find it in. Pass at Ryanson. Oshiman. He's got his own running type in this game. Unlucky. Passes back to Kobo there. The amount of times we play against Kobo, honestly. Must be five or six times in rebuilds. Even if we've signed him or we're going against him. He's an unbelievable threat. Oscan. Into Jaden Sancho. All they need now is their own hand. Return back to Borussia Dortmund and get that dynamic duo once again. Sancho twisting and turning, going back to his roots before he went to Man United and, well, pretty much flopped, let's just say that. Henry Chan there. Get into him. Advantage played. Still alive from though. Jane Sancho. Dortmund kind of working up with Henry Chan here. The former Liverpool man into Oscan. We're going to get with a Blanca there. Can we get it to Kuliskela? Making the run on the wing. Does get it. Kuliskela looking for some trickery. Sends him on his flash. Vitinha here, plays it into Oshiman. Oshiman push up to the left here. And Schlosser back there. Does well. I could showbow and say I meant to do that skill, but I literally just press the analog in and, well, push the direction I wanted to, and, uh, well, it did that. So, works for the best. My man's playing FIFA Street back in the A day. But here we go. Could scared. Couldn't whip in the ball here. From inside Kerala. Going into Oshiman. Suolo goes into Rashford. Oh, and Marcus Rashford. The new son in the Englishman with the iconic celebration. Gets the goal in the Champions League final. Big, big time player. Big occasion. He steps up when he matters. What a ball into the box there. Kobo kicks out pretty much. Pissed out. And it falls to a man with a lot of good shot power in Marcus Rashford. Our new number 11. I'll be intrigued to see his stats. There's one new in the Champions League final. Thanks to the English one. Come on. So I believe as Rock is Rashford's first touch of the game. He touched the ball and bam, gets a goal for the team. And he took him down there as well. We get it back with Antanya. It's really well. Napoli dominating like they're doing in real life. Victor Oshiman is making a run. Can Oshiman get the shot off there? He does, to be fair. And it just goes wide. An audacious test from the man with the mask. A.K. Batman there, in my eyes. 
or Robin, you can kind of say, what the hell is this analogy by me? I don't know, but the game is the game, ladies and gentlemen. It's a close chance. 31 minutes in now, and Napoli kind of getting their room into the game now. Marcus Rashford also getting the goal. Oshie Man and Kuvis Scala, we knew that dynamic trio was going to link up once in this game, and they have. Run it there. Into Oskan. Oskan goes into Ozzy. No name. Twisted, twisting. Just passed, and to be fair. Well done from Malaria there. Does well. Oshman. It's a great little touch there. To Zambo. Can we just get it over to Marcus Rashford? We can. Marcus Rashford cuts inside. Goes right out wider to Di Lorenzo. Inside to LeBronca. Overlapping run, perhaps. Over to Kuliskaila. Gets the shot off. A highest rate overall player. 93 overall now on right wing. Just gets blocked off there. Lotman there. Plays into Jay and Sandra. Two Englishman players that are linking up very beautifully right there for British Dortmund. Plays it back inside to Brannett. Back into Jay and Sancho. That's a good save from Edison. I did not speak there. I had to kind of concentrate a hand. Who is Scala? We're going to try and go for it. Ladies and gentlemen. He's done him again. He's done it again. It's humiliation for that there. For that blonde person. Oh, well, I got a bit too cocky there. Royce in there with the blonde hair. That's what I was referring to him right there. Absolute. Dominated by Kuliskaila on that wing. Number 77 is tearing him apart. But 1 0 going into the second half. Thanks to that man there on the screen. Pure domination. I couldn't say it enough. I couldn't express it enough. Just got to keep going in the second half. So, second half has begun. Only one change for myself, and you'll be able to see him on the screen right now. And number five in Arango, the youth academy player. The 70 rule goes off for area. We did say we'll see him. Potentially special left wing back, but doing the job in left back. I mean, he's pretty much as well. Left wing back is pretty much left back in a way, let's be honest. I mean, they're just a bit more far up and a bit more out wide, you could say. Let's see what this kid's got on his locker. I thought he lost it there. Well, that would be quite bad. Brandt, good switch out wide there to Di Lorenzo. Di Lorenzo, 89 rule. Does well. LeBronca there trying to get past Roster Beck. Gets denied. Minus one is on the move, apparently, in the uh, top FN corner. Can you get any more EA Sports than that? Messing up once again. Sedilla there. Very OP foot card right there. Goes into James Sancho. Bounces past his former team at Inveran. But then the youth academy player does well. We're just going to head it back to Edison there. Play it safe. Run to the boys. But nice from number five there. The youth academy player doing really well. Good pass inside there. Bit of a risky pass. Washman's making the run. But I don't know why LeBlanc are there. Kind of forced it too much there. Into his feet. We need one more goal here really. Just to kind of maybe potentially seat off this Champions League at final. And make history at four. Napoli of their first ever Champions League title for the club history, I do believe. Oscan there, we'll try to get in front of him there. That could be the advantage play there, but Royce and go for the shot in hand. And Becky van der Ven does really well to just get a bit of a block there to go for a corner. Looks like their winger is going off there for who you not know, in the back of their good player indeed. Lockman with a head of goal. Edison on for another Champions League medal. Good for up there. Gives it in to Kula Scala here. Kula Scala trying to bounce past him there. He does. Gets him with pace this time, but there's heavy touch there. We just tried to just kind of push it a bit more direct. We just did it way too much. And a bit is in the ass. Well done there, Fatina. Into two. Nice. Rashford on the ball. Lovely play. Can we find Oshi Men? It's Oshi Men. Oshi Men. Can he do it? It is Oshi Men. Of course it's him. The main man, number nine. The Nigerian king. The mask has scored in the Champions League final and I'm going to say it you never speak too soon in football but I will here today I think that is a wrap within two seasons pure domination from Moshi Men in Napoli so 2-0 to Napoli like I said I didn't want to speak too soon but this Dortmund team didn't look, look strong enough and it hasn't been and Napoli need a bit more of a challenge to be honest I want like Real Madrid or Mbappe PSG team could have been more of a threat, but there you go again. Mickey van der Ven doing well. Di Lorenzo as well now. Little dink over the top there. That's a good ball there. Kuriskeda is out wide. And Kuriskeda, this is not one man you want to give on to the wing. And 93 overall. Oshimen's making the run, but Royston, to be fair, with a good incession, does well. He's been actually quite good for him. I know what I said in the first half. He's been sat on his ass like numerous times for Kuriskeda. But it is what it is. We get it there. Mickey van der Ven, that's going to be a foul there. We've got substitution here in Ramani here. Going on for Varane. Varane looking for another Champions League medal as well. Also winning so many with uh, Real Madrid. And Matt Hummels here, a icon, you could say, in football, is coming on. But Oscan, the DM room, a bit of a, a, bit of a weird one there. 
You need to go badly. Dortmund to get back in this game. But Brannock goes for the shot there. And Edison will catch that. Easy peasy. Try and go for him. No, we can't do it. Mogs rash on the ball though. And Oshiman has found a gap again over the top. And that pace is frightening. Does well there. Can he cut inside again? And Saul does well to get back inside. 19 minutes in now though. Emery Chan gets in the ball. Namaka plays inside of Hummels. Lockman, there's nothing they can do about it now. The game is over. The ref just got to blow this here. And that is that. It could be a clean sheet in the Champions League final as well. And I think we will get that. Unless Dortmund will get a consolation for their away fans. Into Emery Chan. And that is going to be game set in match. We're clearing our lines. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. We have again done it again. Not three seasons, but two seasons. It has always took us for Napoli to rebuild into absolute giants of world football and I know I think I might have said it in my Milan rebuild or one of the rebuilds right recently that that was with the dominant team but I've got to say this Napoli team was a joke I mean within the first season and probably the second season yes Oshiman and Kumiskeda were very high overall players with Edison as well but the rest of the team were kind of mid 80s overall but we won the quadruple we absolutely battered some of the teams the highest rated teams in the Champions League knockout rounds Pure domination. That's all I've got to say. But there it is for the first time ever. The Champions League title with the blue and white stripes of Napoli. Fantastic team. We've won the league twice. We've won the Super Cup, the EA Sports Super Cup twice. We've won the Coppa Italia once. And now the Champions League. The quadruple has been completed for Napoli. I'm going to say this could be the greatest team of all time with me as our manager. But my job here is done. And the Champions League tournament has been confirmed completed. Run to the team. We continue on. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Confirmation that Napoli have been dormant in the Champions League final 2 0. Thanks to Kula Scala, Oshi Man, and really Marcus Rashford as well. Absolutely tearing it up indeed. Pure domination. I know I keep saying pure domination, but it is. Absolutely is. I mean, with Kula Scala, look, we saw there winning the player of the season with Serie A and then going on to win the quadruple. He's got to be favourites to win the Ballon d'Or, but we also will not be seeing that rebuild as. It has been replayed. We've won every trophy we can do with Napoli. The only one we actually did miss out on was the, well, the Conference League, which once again, my unmarched Memphis in Umar Emery's Aston Villa. It's just one of them. But anyway, let's have a look at the outstanding players of the season. We all know who the best one's going to be in Kula Scala. But let's have a look here. To be fair, I uh, suppose to be fair with the assist, counting 41 goals for Oshiman indeed. Champions League was fantastic. Same with Kula Scala. Also got way more assists, hence why, why he got the player of the season because he is only a little bit more shy from goals from Oshman. But then you can say the same to Oshman as well with the assist, but it is what it is. Marcus Rashford obviously turned out to be a brilliant signing in the Champions League as well, scoring in the final, getting six goals in the whole Champions League range, around 16 as well. Brilliant signing. Fatinho or Bernardo Silva from the first season, fantastic indeed. LeBronca there with 11 assists, Moran with two goals, Mickey van der Ven with two goals as well. Both centre backs getting two goals this season with the left back as well, and do the Renzo getting some goals and assists. Other than that, though, the team is fantastic. I cannot kind of praise it enough. 117 played, 84 wins, only 18 draws and only 15 losses. With our biggest win, a drink from Mose 5-0. Our biggest loss against AC Milan 4-2, which I do believe was the semi-final game, I do believe, in the Coppa in the first season. Record signing was pretty much 80 million, which was Edison. And that, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, one club, two league ties, one domestic and one continental. And obviously, it doesn't show you, but we also won the Super Cup twice as well from EA Sports 1. But there you go, ladies and gentlemen. The team has been completed. There it is. So if you did like this video, ladies and gentlemen, please like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next rebuild. Bye.